The NTSB has released the prelim report on the fatal mid-air collision at EAA Air Venture between the helicopter and the gyroplane on July 29th. Let's take a look at the report on this episode of Taking Off. Hi and welcome to Taking Off. I'm Dan Milliken and I wish I could bring different news today. Some of you know I released a video about this crash last week. I happened to ride with the pilot Mark Peterson in the same helicopter a few days before and experienced firsthand his obvious skill and safety-minded proficiency. And since the crash, I've gotten to know the family of the passenger, Tom Vols. And I'd like to thank the Facebook page, Aviation Accidents This Day in History, for alerting me to the prelim report being out. So here's the recap. On Saturday, July 29th, about 1227 Central Time, a Rotorway 162F helicopter, November 193 Alpha Zulu, and an ELA Eclipse 10 gyroplane, November 221 Echo Lima, were involved in a mid-air collision near Oshkosh, Wisconsin, on the grounds of EAA. The helicopter was destroyed and the pilot and passenger were fatally injured. The gyroplane was destroyed, the pilot received serious injuries, and the passenger received minor injuries. Okay, the gyroplane Eclipse 10 is an enclosed tandem gyroplane, two people sitting behind each other. The gyroplane gets its lift from a free-spinning main rotor that keeps its speed by the air rushing through it with a prop in the back pushing the aircraft through the air. The Rotorway 162F is a home-built helicopter. It's a two-seater and had a new engine that Mark Peterson was testing out for the company. The two in the Rotorway was Pilot Mark. He was a volunteer safety pilot for the rotary activities at EAA Air Venture. The passenger was Tom Volz, who had just completed his build of a helicopter and was also a volunteer safety pilot and air boss for the helicopter landing zone across the road from the ultralight runway. The NTSB report states, according to multiple videos and witness accounts, the gyroplane was approaching the EAA ultralight home-built rotorcraft runway from the south on the base leg when it executed a left 360 degree turn. The helicopter, which was positioned behind the gyroplane in the traffic pattern, was also approaching the runway on the base leg from the south following the north-south paved road. About 250 feet above ground level, the gyroplane impacted the left side of the helicopter. Okay, this is key. The gyroplane executed a left 360 and impacted the side of the helicopter. I've read in the comments of my previous video a few people saying they heard the gyro passenger say the helicopter ran into them. According to the NTSB, this is inaccurate. The gyroplane took a turn to the left, executing a 360, and ran into the helicopter. The report continues. Both aircraft descended in a near vertical attitude towards the terrain with debris separating from both aircraft. The helicopter impacted the terrain, came to rest inverted, and a post-accident fire ensued. The gyroplane impacted an unoccupied parked fixed-wing airplane that was located between the north-south paved road and runway 36 left. The unoccupied plane was a Mooney. Here you can see pictures where the rotorway's rotor impacted the gyroplane's right horizontal and vertical stabilizers and the helicopter's rotor separated the gyro's main mast as well. Another key piece of information on the prelim report, neither aircraft reveal evidence of pre-impact mechanical malfunction or failures. Again, the rumor mill was active about possible helicopter engine troubles or the gyro having a mechanical error that caused the turn back, but this has been proven to be inaccurate. There were no problems with either aircraft. Now I want to address the safety procedures at the ultralight field as I was there during the week and I got to experience one of the daily safety briefings held for pilots and was mandatory if you were going to fly. In fact, you were given a wristband of the day proving you had attended the safety briefing. Mark spoke up in the safety briefing I attended voicing a concern about some of the gyros not following procedures. It was addressed. Every pilot flying knew the pattern. They knew the mandatory call-out positions. They knew the procedures for passing other aircraft, the procedures for full stop versus low passes. Everyone knew the altitudes. There was an air boss on the radio for just that field. 
there have been comments like, it was only a matter of time and stuff like that. I say no, it wasn't a matter of time. It was a safe field. I know because I experienced it. The workers ensured I had the right wristband. They wouldn't let me in until it was time. They walked me through every step. I never once felt unsafe. What the safety plans and procedures cannot always take into account is the human factor. It can mitigate as much as possible, which I believe was done in this case. It had been years and years since the fatality, and it wasn't the EAA safety procedures that failed them. One other point I want to bring up from the comments. Some feel that there's a lot more small aircraft crashes as of late. Actually, the numbers are showing a decrease. But as social media has enabled news to spread much faster in this electronic age, we're just hearing about them more. With the lessons we've learned in blood, aviation is safer today than it was yesterday. We still have room for lots of improvement, but let's identify the real failures and fix those and not implement knee-jerk fixes to what's really not the problem. It's not about optics, it's about saving lives. And with the amount of video and eyewitness accounts, I feel confident the NTSB will be able to determine what went wrong and answer the big question. Why did the gyroplane execute a left 360? A giving site has been created for both Mark and Tom, and I'll put a link below if you'd like to donate. I'll leave a link in the description. Both men leave behind grieving families, and I've gotten to know Tom's family, and the guy had beaten cancer, leukemia, and was working towards his license to be able to carry a passenger in his home-built helicopter. His grandson was waiting on the field for the next ride. That's all I have. This channel is brought to you by sponsors who make reporting like this possible. It helps us to continue to bring the news and videos. If you support them, it helps support us, so check them out. I'll also put links in the description below. Please stay safe and remember, superior judgment trumps superior skills. Here's the video of my ride with Mark a few days before and a tribute to him and Tom Volz.